Welcome. Thanks for joining me here again today. So I'm no longer able to access that beautiful space I was making videos in earlier, the Western Front and Edam Dance. So I'm here in my home and I'm experimenting, as many of you probably are right now, experimenting with new ways of going about your day and about your activities and new ways of getting information out there, communicating with your friends and your family and your work partners and yeah, so we're all in it together, still in the in the uh, lockdown of COVID-19 and I'm feeling now that I need a little bit more patience. We are still seeing how this is unfolding and it seems like we're in it for a lot longer than we anticipated and I need to cultivate patience and uh, a deep well of trust, even in the face of uncertainty and the unknown, I want to be able to tap into that core, that center, that knows that it's okay and that no matter what happens, I can always circle back to this patient, deep, knowing wisdom. So. Uh, it's a little bit later in the day now and um, I'm going to try and do a yoga practice that helps me to kind of come more deeply into the pelvis and the hips and to kind of open up this area so that I can receive the water element that is up the hips and find some flow and some ease and release the tension and the fear that can also gather and collect down in that area of the body. And um, I'm going to go at a slower uh, pace, but I want to also give you a practice that isn't too long so you can plug it in uh, to your day whenever you need it. So that's my intention. Let's find a moment to just sit quietly, you in your home, me and mine, and bring your attention to your breath. And as you inhale, you're expanding and opening space all around your rib cage, 360 degrees, and also all the way down into the belly, the side ribs, and the back. Imagine you could breathe out the back of your sacrum there. That's the bony, um, stop, bony point at the end of your spine where it sets into the pelvis. So you imagine the breath on that inhale expanding and opening space in the back of your pelvis as well as the sides of your ribs like you had gills they're expanding and on the exhales contracting everything's hugging back into center and then you can just add this little pelvic floor squeeze that lifts and lengthens and decompresses your spine as you press the breath out so it's an inhale warming, expanding, inhale, and then on the exhale, a little squeeze from the pelvic floor, an intentional release that lifts and engages all along your deep core line. And again, inhaling and exhaling. And then close your eyes and just sit with the breath for a few moments. Letting all of your thoughts, your worries, your concerns, things you're engaged in right now just kind of dissolve, drift into the background while you bring your awareness more fully into your body and into your senses. Noticing the temperature of the breath as you draw it in through your nostrils, the feeling in your throat, the feeling in your chest. And then tuning in to all the points that are in contact with the earth, no matter how you're seated, even if you're seated on the edge of a couch or a chair, feeling all the points that are in connection with the earth. So through the floor down into the core of the earth, you are being held and supported. You are being met. And then on your exhale, lift that deep 
stable, powerful core earth energy up and out through your body. Express it out through your mouth, through your nose, whatever feels comfortable. begin by chanting OM once. Take a deep breath in. Aum. I'm just feeling the resonance of that vibration. And then feel free to just kind of release the legs when you're sitting for a while. So release your ankles and release your knees, leaning back on your hands without slouching in the chest or in the low back. You can roll your ankles and this helps to mobilize a little bit through the legs. And then bring yourself back into a cross-legged position. Or if you were seated on the edge of a couch, you can just go back there. You want to make sure you're sitting up over your sitting bones. Relax your hands nice and broad and wide across your chest. And then we're going to start with a warm up for the spine, sort of circular motion through the spine. And it's an inhale to open and press the chest forward, but be careful not to arch and push and contract the low back muscles so you're not shortening. Finding, uh, uh, and creating more tension in the low back, but just reaching and lifting energetically up from the breastbone up to the uh, breastbone up to the collarbones here, arching, and that inhale opens and expands and lifts the whole front body. The breath moves down freely all sides of the pelvis, and then we wind the ribs over to one side. And then on the exhale, as you squeeze up through the pelvic floor, you're opening and reaching back through the space between your shoulder blades, and then you're winding your ribs over to the other side. So it's a circular motion, inhaling to wind, exhaling as your ribs reach back to open the back of your heart, and then inhaling as your rib cage, your chest, arches forward and keeping that pelvic floor squeezed so you're lifting up past the lumbar not rounding out through the lumbar but lifting that circle that movement circular movement up across the ribs like you're stirring a pot and then you can circle the other direction stirring soup in a pot <laughs> You stir a pot? No. Good. And then winding that in slowly so you're slowly drawing back into stillness, back into center. And surprise yourself with that stillness. So try not to control this moment. Get smaller and smaller. Winding that spiraling action back in. And then close your eyes and see if you can still sense that beautiful spiraling quality deep within. Spiraling up toward the crown of your head, but also simultaneously spiraling down towards the tailbone. And then release your legs again, shake them out, roll your ankles, and come back to your cross-legged position, this time with the non-habitual uh, foot in front, sitting up over a cushion if you need to, or sitting back on the couch. Good. Inhale, float your arms up, so unraveling them up in front of you, releasing the shoulders, keeping the elbows soft, arms as wide as you need to, as forward as you need to, so you don't lift and <laughs> tense up those shoulder muscles at the top there too much. And then we're going to inhale and kind of come over to a twist 
to your left. Curl in there and stretch. Stretching, opening the whole right side and back area. And then float your arms back up to center. And then come over and stretch the other way. So you're framing either side of your knee, curling up from that pelvic floor lift toward the back of your heart and wrapping the stretch through the left side and back. Inhale up to center and then exhale bowing in into that sort of twisted curve over to the left and back up to center and then curling in and up past the lumbar so you're not pushing out the low back. Open across the back of the shoulders, the top of the shoulders and keep breathing with it. Find a flow at your breath's pace opening through the whole back line and the side hip there. Keep rooting back through the opposite sitting bone so you're not lifting that sitting bone. And one more time. And then come back up to center. Bring your hands through prayer, coming to center, finding that balance as you lift and energize on your exhale, up through the pelvic floor squeeze, up through the psoas, which supports the lumbar in the front, and then up through the QL, which supports the lumbar in the back. And lifting and squeezing that energy right up through the top of your head. So we're gonna maintain that active uh, engagement with the pelvic floor throughout most of the practice. And then bring yourself, spinning your shins to one side onto your hands and knees and press your hands firmly down onto the mat shoulder distance. So you want to engage the whole ring of your palm, thumb pad, index finger pad, all the way to the baby finger pad, as well as all the finger tips, so that you can distribute the weight across the palm and not kind of push out into the wrist there and default to the wrist and kind of shove the shoulders up around the ears. So take your elbows, swing them out to the sides for a moment and then circle them to point toward the back of the room. Check that you can still plant firmly the index finger and the thumb pad down to the mat. Hug your belly in and then press down, bent elbows first so you can get a press from the earth. Round up to the back of your heart, the back of your chest here, hanging your head just between your arms, letting it dangle there, not pushing to into chest. And inhale, arching and opening through the top of your chest there from the breastbone to the collarbones, you're lifting and then right up through the crown of the head. And then exhale, press firmly into the earth. Pull that strength up through your arms into your chest and keep moving at your breath's pace. So moving at your rhythm. Feeling whatever that is tonight, today. Whether you're moving faster than me or slower than me, doesn't matter. Find the rhythm of your breath. Even start to notice the top of your inhale. Maybe there's a little pause there in the bottom of your exhale. Maybe there's a little pause there. And see if you can join your movement with your breath. One more time. Inhale, arch. Open and elbow, spin back, lifting long through your neck spine. Tuck your toes if they're not already. And then exhale, press down strongly through your hands. Hover your knees off the floor and just really long and engage through all sides of your spine. Float those knees up. Then lower them down. Inhale, open. And exhale, press. Knees hover. Lower knees, arch and open. Sitting bones can move back a little bit. And then exhale, press and float your hips up and back to your downward facing dog. So you're in down dog, you can walk in place, you can keep your knees bent, you can set your feet even wider than your hips. If you feel tight in the hamstrings, you wanna bend the knees a lot so you can slide the spine long and sitting bones up and back and weight away from your wrists. Another deep breath. And then kind of swish your feet back a bit or walk your hands forward so you've got a nice long dog. Lift up through your sitting bones there, pulsing up onto the balls of the feet. Then bend your knees and swivel your knees over to the right and your heels to the left. You can stay on the balls of the feet. You're coming into a twisted dog. You want to keep 
your hips lifted so they don't drop too much. So keep them lifted and knees bent. You're stretching your whole right side body through the shoulder blade area, down the sides and out to the upper outer hip there. And a big breath. And then through bent knees, come back to down dog. Energize the down dog, lifting some energy up the legs. Sitting bones stay lifted. Bend your knees and then swivel your knees over to the left and your heels to the right and stretch and open the side, the left side, the top left hip there, even a little bit through the top outer left leg and then come back to center. Good. Find that pulse and then roll yourself from the feet out through the crown of your head last into your plank position, lower the knees down, stay lifted through the shoulders so you're not collapsing. Stay lifted through your low belly so you're not dropping and sinking through the hips here. And then look past the bridge of your nose and lower yourself down till you come down, pubic bone first, onto the mat. And then taking a moment here to set your palms in the way that feels free for you in your shoulders. And so that you can press strongly with your hands and get that lift and strength up through your arms and into your shoulders to help you lift out of the lumbar spine. So if you take the hands too far forward, as sometimes um, people do in their yoga practice, it tends to push, like it makes a hinge point in the low back. So it pushes from the floor and then into the low back. But if you can, you slide the hands back a little bit, keep the shoulders lifted, you can pull up through the lumbar uh, in the front. So that's your belly, low belly area, your pelvic floor and the psoas, and then lift out of the lumbar spine and come up a little higher without pushing back and into the lumbar. You're lifting and lengthening right out through the crown of the head. So find the way that works for you. Make sure you can kind of really engage on that exhale and squeeze up through the pelvic floor to lift and open the low back long as you come into your back bend, big or small. One more time, wave up through the crown of your head, and then exhale and release it down. Come back strongly as you exhale up to the navel, and then slide back into your child pose, taking your hands with you, resting, stacked palms, stacked fists, whatever works, release your head, and just take your breath back into the sacrum there in the back of the sacrum. And imagine as you inhaled, you could breathe right here, opening some space in the back of the hips. Expand. You can even take your hands there if that's comfortable for you. Expanding in this space between the pelvis and the back bottom ribs. Expanding in the side ribs like you had gills. And each time you exhale, you're releasing tension, uh, toxins from the body. You're detoxing. That's your number one way of detoxing is that exhale. But you're also de-stressing and letting go. So really intentionally let go of the worries and the concerns and see if you can cultivate through your practice a deeper trust in the present in your innate and natural ability to adapt, to transform, to do what you need to do. So one more deep breath. And then stretch your arms out in front of you and keep those armpits lifted so that Armpits lifted means shoulders lifted, so you're not pushed out through the shoulders and squeezing and pulling on the neck there. So armpits stay lifted, elbows lifted if you can. Wave yourself forward through the upper back onto your hands and knees. Tuck those toes again, arching back a little bit with your sitting bones, reaching back towards your heels, open the front of your chest, and then exhale, press down strongly and slide hips back to down dog. In your downward dog, take a breath. Wave it out through the top of your head as you exhale. And then bend everything, get closer to the earth. Press strongly down with your limbs as you lift your right leg up. 
Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, pull knee to chest, curl up strongly, pressing down with your hands. Reach that knee up toward the upper chest there, and then step it up the mat behind your right wrist there. You can kind of inch your left knee back, uh, left foot back behind you, and then lower your left knee down. You can pad your mat with a blanket. Another yoga mat works. Or if you're like me and you have a carpet, perfect. So come onto the top of your foot here. You want to make sure you're forward of your kneecap, you're not right on the kneecap, and your front knee is right over your heel there. And then just take a little rocking movement to notice what's going on with your pelvis and just give yourself time to be your own teacher, to really listen. So are you swinging your hips from side to side? Can you rock back and forth and keep those sitting bones reaching back evenly? What do you feel in the front leg? What do you feel in the back leg? so that you can keep the hips balanced and get the most out of this stretch as we move into it deeper as the class progresses. You want to be able to stay in that stretch through the front of your left hip and also stay in the stretch through the inner thigh and the front hip and glute on the front hip at the same time. So here on your fingertips or on blocks if you need to. Take a breath at center so we're not plunging the hips all the way down and blocking this flow of energy, blocking this channel of energy in the hip and shoving and dumping weight into the sacrum and the low back there. So we're backing off that left hip crease, keeping some space there and even taking the right hip off the thigh a little bit so that we can keep some space in that right hip as well. And then pressing down evenly through back knee and front foot, unravel your spine up and lengthen. Take a big breath here. Reach that energy evenly up through all sides of your spine as you exhale. Then place your hands on your knee. I'm going to do a little cat-cow in, in this pose here. So you want to make sure that you're not pushing your knee past your heel and plunging into that hip as we move. So the cat-cow, the movement is in the thoracic spine in the chest. Inhale, arch and open. Exhale, pull back through the navel. Keep that hip stable and curl and open the back of your chest. You can stay looking forward if you need to for balance. Or if you're able, your curling head is moving with Inhale and arching, maybe you're looking up, and then exhale, curling and opening the back of your heart one more time. Inhale, and exhale. You could come back to the fingertips. Nice. <clears throat> On your uh, left fingertips, take your right elbow up, unfurl it over the left arm. Try not to pick the right hip up. Drop it, lift and open, open across the chest, and slowly circle that arm back. Down and as you reach fingers forward, your hips glide back a little bit. You're getting an outer right hip stretch, outer right thigh stretch, even into the IT band. Circle the arm back up behind you. Down, hips slide back as fingers reach forward. One more time. And then back up, unraveling that arm nice and easy through the elbow first. Open across your chest. Nice. Circle the hand around onto the low back. Here, we'll loop the shoulder onto the back or even onto the opposite ways. Pull your belly back and then take your fingertips out a little wider and see if you can open into a little cobra heart opening stretch here, pressing back through the back of your skull and long through the crown of your head. Good, relax that hand down. Place your hands strongly on the mat, tuck your back toes and step back to down dog. Big deep breath, exhale out through your mouth. Stick your tongue out and release that and let it go. Good bend everything. Nice long dog. And kind of come into that twisted dog again, twisting your knees over to the right. Set your um, hips up and back. So you're stretching and opening the side body. And then pressing from the feet, unravel your spine into a bit of a side plank here. You're on the outer edge of the back foot. You're standing fully on the front foot. And so you were in a warrior pose. Good. And then bend your knees. Take the weight back over the balls of the feet. Swivel your feet the other way. Bend your knees. Get that juicy press from the legs. Rolling and unraveling out through your spine into a plank position. Keep both hands down for now. And then back over the balls of the feet to downward facing dog. 
from here. Draw your belly in, roll yourself forward into your push-up position, shoulders on your back, lower yourself firmly, lifting up through that low belly as you lower yourself down, keep your shoulders lifted, and come all the way down, place the hands nice and strong, elbows wrapped back, hugging through the low belly in, lift your spine, unraveling head up lots into your cobra, exhale it down, another one, find your breath. Move with your breath's pace. At the top, there's a little pause. Inhale, open through your chest more. And exhale down. Gathering up from the earth right up through the center of you. Opening your heart chest. And exhale, bowing it back down. Good, giving yourself the rest that you need. You can squeeze out your wrists if you're feeling anything in your wrists. Come into your child pose, stacked palms or fists. Push your hips from side to side. Rock your head from side to side. Breathe and let it go. And then take your palms up the mat again. So we Face that shoulder distance, middle finger in line with the outer edge of your shoulder. Fingers actively pressing, full palm pressing. Wave yourself up onto your hands and knees. Arch your spine as you tuck toes, slide to sitting bones back. Inhale, exhale, press down, hug up through the low belly and bring yourself back to downward facing dog. In down dog, bend everything. Press the left leg back, center the hips. Take a moment, pause. And then on your exhale, knee to chest, push down strongly with your palms, round up through your upper back, and lightly step your left foot behind your left wrist. Take your right foot back a touch, so you can lower the knee down without being on the kneecap, but forward of the knee. Heel and front knee in one line. Good, come onto your fingertips and just take a little rocking movement, back and forth, breathing and just noticing. Noticing how challenging it is as you send the hips back a little bit to keep your hips level so you're not hiking this hip up nor are you swinging over to the right. Breathe. And then find the place that feels centered so you're not stretching anything just yet but you're just balancing the pelvis centered between your two legs. You're not pushing out through the front of the right hip or dumping all the weight down and compressing on that left hip. Back off a touch so you can get a clear channel, a clear flow up from the earth through your legs, through your pelvis. And then pressing evenly into the foundation, unravel your spine up. Take a moment to stretch up through the sides of your spine, right up to fingertips, the top of your head. And then place your hands on your front thigh. You can just stack palms one on top of the other. Inhale, on your exhale, you're rounding through the upper back. You curl in, looking forward if you need to for balance. And then arching on that in-breath and curling on the exhale with your breast pace. So sometimes we want to get the pelvis involved. We push the pelvis under us and that presses out the low back spine and hardens the hip crease. Back off the hip, keep the pelvis behind you and see if you can create that action of curling and arching just in the upper chest and in the back. Always with that active engagement up from the push down through your foundation and up through your pelvic floor. One more time. Inhale, lift your arms up, bring your fingertips down lightly onto a block or onto the floor there, and then unravel your left elbow up all the way up through fingers if you can, Press down with the bottom fingers, open out across the chest, arm is not behind you or forward, but right over the bottom hand, drop that left hip and start to circle. Hand back, down, and then as it reaches forward, hips back. Unraveling the arm from the elbow first just helps to keep that shoulder moving more freely so you're not getting jammed up in the shoulder. And one more time. Good, and then you can circle the back of the hand around onto the low back or low waist. Keep that shoulder lifted and stretch. 
You can even stretch your neck there, away from your shoulder, stretching the side of your neck and across the top of the shoulder. And then you can take your right fingers out wider, pull your belly back, ribs back, head back, arch and open like that cobra wave. You're opening, expressing out across your chest more. And then back to center, relax your hands down, tuck your toes and step back to down dog. Big breath in, stick your tongue out. And let it go. Good, slowly walk your feet forward towards your hands. Walking in there, feet hip distance or wider if you need to, knees stay bent. Elbows come to thighs if you need to, creates a nice traction for your low back. Keep the sitting bones back and bow your head. Take another deep breath. Expand it all the way to the back of the pelvis there. And then Coming up halfway on your exhale, fingertips to shins, hands to thighs, or if you're flexy, fingertips on the floor. Pressing out and back through your sitting bones, unravel up through low belly, first head last, and fold it back down. And then pressing down to the earth, keep those sitting bones back, not rounding through the low back, just gently curling up through the top of your shoulders, head lifts last. Inhale, put your arms up, and exhale, bring your hands to prayer. So coming up to the front of your mat here, so you have some space. Take a moment, standing in mountain pose to prepare. You want to feel your feet balance right underneath you, so you're rocking your weight evenly across the foot, not pushed into the ball of the foot, not pushed and hardened through the front of the hip here, and pressing into your lumbar. But the weight is back. You feel the weight dropping down through your heels, sitting bones over your heels, and that lightness bringing all the way up to the crown of your head. Then bend everything, hips slide back. You're pressing down onto your right foot, lifting your left foot first. You bring left ankle across the right knee. If that's too hard for you or too uh, difficult for you right now, and you're having a uh, hard time balancing, you can use a wall for support or move closer to a chair or couch and hold on. Or you can just put your toes down on the floor and cross the ankles one on top of the other and you're still working all the same um, muscles to engage um, the core in your balance. So if just taking a moment, slide your hips back wherever you are, breathing, see if you can keep those hips level so you're not leaning into the right side dropping the left hip, slide hips back, breathe, long spine, keep waving it through your spine, all the way up through the crown of your head, feel the front foot, keep the knee back over that standing legs heel, and then on your inhale, lift all the way up, Lightly lift and lengthen, slide those left toes down along the mat and come into a lunge position. Position, Standing, lunge, front knee right over your heel. Stance is hip distance, breathe, lengthen up through your ribs. Good, and then exhale, bring your hands to prayer. Sink a little deeper, you're stretching the front of the hip and the quadricep here again. Careful not to push and harden that left hip crease back off a little bit and lift up above that through the top of the psoas. So we're not all about the hip flexors hardened and blocking that flow, but softening the hip flexors, the bottom of the psoas there. So you can lift and lengthen through that deeper internal support. The psoas that runs up the front of your lumbar. And then of course all the way up your spine. Inhale, lift up and exhale, sink a little bit deeper. Inhale up, and exhale, sink deeper. One more time. Good, and then stretch everything long. Place your fingertips down. Inch your left foot back behind you and lower your left knee down. Come on to the top of the left foot there. And then take your time here, just kind of rocking as we did before, to find your balance, to find both edges, both sides of your pelvis stretching. So you're coming into this play between both sides 
of this pose, so the back leg or the front leg. You can see if you can keep your awareness balance there. And then take your right hand inside of your right foot. Step your left hand out wider so you're not shortening shoulders. Keep them nice and broad. And then if you're able, you take your right toes out. Kneecap and toes open onto the same line. If it feels comfortable for you and you can stay strong and not sickling in that outer ankle, you can even roll onto the baby toe side of your foot. So the outer ankle stays drawn in. It's not rounding and sickling. So toes open, heel stays where it is first. That might be enough, you stay there, or you come onto the baby toe side of your foot. You can come up onto fingertips, you can come up onto blocks. Make sure you're not pushed forward through that left hip and dumping into the right hip as well, so you're back off those hips. Feel both sides of your pelvis stretching. Breathe. And then down with your left fingertips, unravel your right arm, lift and lengthen. Good, now we're going to circle out in the big lips out and over to the left, and then back towards center, and then out across your chest, pull belly back, out to the left, and one more time. And then place that right hand down, diagonally away from that front foot and knee. Make sure the knee and the rolling in with you, keep it guiding open, stay balanced in your hips, back off the hips a little bit, and stretch out through your right fingertips, opening your side body, Opening inner thighs, it's a pigeon-like stretch for the front of the left hip there, the quads, and the inner thighs and the outer glutes on the right. And then back to center, step your foot back to center, hands back to center. Step the uh, right hand around the right foot, and take your right leg back behind you and shake it up. Good, back into downward facing dog. Coming into a little vinyasa flow, a little faster here, bend your knees, roll yourself forward into a plank position, lower knees down, lower yourself down, and just one beautiful unfurl up to exhale, I mean up to your cobra on your exhale, and then back down. And then if you can, pressing down strongly, come up through your push-up position, tuck your toes, and back to downward facing dog. Good. Deep breath in. Still opening up that right side. We're in down dog. We're going to swivel heels over to the left. Toes to the right in your twisted dog here. Step your right foot down. You're on the baby toe side of your back foot. Unravel your legs, your spine long if you can. Take the right arm up. Lift and lengthen it here. Find a balance. You can always keep fingertips down. And then bend knees, come back to center, swivel the other way. Find that flow, pressing from the earth all the way out to the crown of the head, unraveling your top arm if you can, slowly moon shaping as you circle it back down, and then spin back over the balls of the feet to downward facing dog. Walk yourself forward. Find a Lengthening stretch here for the low back, wherever you need to be. Hands or elbows on your thighs. Knees stay bent for that ease of flow up through your legs and then hang your head. And let the tension drain out through your neck and your shoulders, your jaw, as you exhale. One exhale to come up halfway and fold it down. Press down into your feet, lightly gather up through the low belly, lift yourself up to standing, stretch all the way up to your fingers, come up to the front of your mat again, bring your hands to prayer position and center yourself here over your two feet, hip distance, find your balance. Coming into chair pose, the hips slide back, the knees balance over your heels, push down into your left foot, so bringing the right leg up this time. Finding your ankle to knee pose, or maybe it's just ankle across ankle. Maybe you need the wall or the couch, wherever you are, 
Keep those hips sliding back and fold long spine over your leg to deepen the stretch. So this is the piriformis stretch, which is your external rotator in your glutes there. Helps to externally rotate the thigh. So we want to deepen into that stretch by staying aligned and strong on all sides of the spine. So we're not defaulting by sinking into the outer left hip here or hiking the right hip up really high. Keep sliding, sitting bones back evenly and find your edge wherever that is and breathe into it. Good, press down into the earth, find that earth energy, pull it up to the arch of your foot all the way up to fingertips, Ooh, losing my balance. Good, and then slide your toes along the mat, come into a lunge position here, nice long lunge, you can kind of swivel those toes back so your back knee can stay bent, your pelvis balanced between your two feet, inhale, float that energy up, exhale, bring your hands to prayer and just sink a little bit deeper so you're not sinking down with your spine and compressing down into the pelvis, but the knee is getting closer and this length is, is getting longer up through the front of your hip, your quadricep, and your hip as you pull the line of tension from the knee out to the top of your head, you're stretching. Good, so inhale, lift, and exhale. Inhale, keep that light lift on the exhale, pressing up and out. And one more time. And then reach your arms nice and long, bring your fingertips down onto the mat, and bring your right knee down. And you can bring yourself into a balanced place here, nice long enough stance that you can start to stretch and open the front of that right hip a little bit. And you're not taking the knee past your heel. And then make sure your stance is hip distance as well. So just give yourself some sort of gray space to adjust, rock, move, notice what's happening. And then we're going to take the left hand inside of your left foot. Take your, This might already be a deep stretch for you. Your inner thighs are stretching here already. So you might want to stay here. Take your right hand out wider. If you're staying here, you just stay here. You can rock, breathe. If you're able to, the toes open. Heel stays where it is. That keeps the inner, um, so the outer ankle engaged and lifted inward so it's not sickling and outward. And then if you're able to, you can rock to the baby toe side of this foot, engaging really actively with that outer blade of your foot, pressing strongly into the floor. Open the knee and the toes and the knees on the same plane. Rock a little bit, sway a little bit, find the balance between the two sides of your pelvis there, opening and stretching, creating that inner thigh opening on the front hip, the glute opening on the front hip and hip flexors stretching on the back hip. And then we're going to unravel, left arm up, circle it in a big elliptical movement over to the right, feeling that flow, riding that wave with your breath at your pace. Faster than me, slower than me, whatever works. Open and on a diagonal away from that left knee, left hip. So keep opening it out there. Don't let it roll in as you reach the left fingers out diagonally to the front right corner of your mat. And then back your hips up, back them up. Keep some more space there and you'll get a deeper glute stretch and side stretch as you bow in. And slide your hands back to center, your toes back to center, left Hand comes around the outside of your left foot, tuck your back toes, and step on back to your downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale, stick your tongue out. Let it go. Again, into our twisted dog, we twist to the right. Unravel long legs, long spine. Take the right arm up, unfurl it up toward the sky, and then slowly reach it down. And then we swivel over the balls of the feet to the left. You can do that a little bit faster. And slowly reach it down. And then we come back to the right. And this time, see if you can step the right foot halfway up the mat. Keep your hips lifted. And you will stretch those glutes, that outer hip, the outer leg, even the IT bend. Toes and kneecap on the same line. See if you can unravel your arm right up over. Keep those hips lifted. 
Bottom shin can come down. You can stay here. This works better for your body right now. And then relax that hand down. Step back to your down dog. Swivel the other way. Stepping if you can. Your left foot halfway up the mat. Hips stay lifted. Or bottom shin comes down. Hips lift. Opening again. Still in that pigeon like stretch through the outer glute. Inside there. And circle your hand down. And back to downward facing dog. One last <coughs> chaturanga here. So you can weave yourself forward into your plank position. Draw belly in, shoulders stay lifted on the upper back as you lower yourself down. Weave it up into upward facing dog if that feels good to you. Arms press longer. Come up onto the thighs. Belly hugs in a lot. And maybe onto the tops of the feet. Breathe open. And then we'll rest back in child pose. So give yourself that neutralizing, self-soothing hug of child pose. Breathing deeply. Letting go. And then slowly engage up through the low belly. Walk your hands in with you. Roll yourself up to sitting. You're finding balance. You created a lot of heat probably, a lot of deep opening in your hips and your hip joint. Release a lot of flow, a lot of energy. So bring yourself forward on your mat here. And then we'll finish with a little seated stretch. And if you have a yoga block, you can sit on it. You can sit on a bolster. You can sit on some sturdy couch cushions. Elevate your hips. And you can even do this up on your couch, sitting at the edge of your couch, staying tall with your spine so your legs can descend down in a way. And that might give you a little bit more freedom to rock your pelvis. So wherever you are, you need to be able to rock your pelvis to move deeper in this pose. So elevate the hips if you need to to find this little rock. And then we're gonna open <clears throat> the right leg out. Keep the left shin on the floor. Relax the front of the ankle there. And then bend the right knee. You're on both sides of your pelvis, right fingers Come inside of the right thigh, spin your chest away. So your chest revolves away from your right leg, not your hips. So you're not pushing with those glutes. Relax the glutes, draw your belly in, and then sweep that left arm low. Pick it up over your face there. Lengthen it over your ear, stretching through your whole left side. Elbow can stay bent. Hand around the back of the head. Breathe. Or lengthen all the way out to your fingertips. Now, if you want to support your head here and get a kind of a, a release through your neck because it's a lot of work on your neck, you can press the elbow, right elbow against your knee, knees bent, foot is active, leg is active, so you're engaging all the muscles that you're stretching on that right side, and then rest your head into the fingertips of your right palm. Take a big breath, revolve your chest open, inhale. One more breath. Come back up. Revolve your, revolve your ribs over the right leg there. So right side of the ribs revolve back, left revolve, revolves forward, and your left hip is staying back. Take a deep breath. Open your chest, guide yourself forward, lift it through the front of your pelvis, I mean front of your chest there. Uh, try not to reach with your chin or reach with your shoulders and stay along wherever you are. Wave with it, breathe with it, stay active a little bit so you're not stiff and held and holding and waiting for some magic to happen. Just keep moving, breathing, finding a little, teasing yourself into a little deeper of a stretch. Left hip stays back. That 
right thigh roots back into the hip joint, not push forward with the pelvis tucked under you. One more deep breath. And bring yourself back up. We're going to find a little bit more of an expressive uh, opening through the hips here. So you're going to reach back with your left hand diagonally, like you're casting out a fishing line there. You swing it back and then you let it drop diagonally away from you. And then sweep your right arm down low first. Pick your hips up and come up onto the shin of your left leg there, opening through the front of the right hip, opening through your sides, all the way up, arching, opening if you're flexy, even out across your chest. Breathe with it wherever you are, enjoy it. Take another big inhale at the top and then release back down onto your support cushion block if you have it. And then switch sides. So your left knee is bent, the heel is actively pressing and the toes are lifted. Bring left fingertips inside of your left thigh there and just really seal those two surfaces together, really marrying those two surfaces so you're keeping the banks of the river nice and firm so you can get that uh, clear flowing channel of energy moving up through the hips and your spine. And then revolve your chest away from it. Sweep the right arm low. First pick it up over your ear. Stretch and lengthen through your sides over that left leg. Watch the toes aren't rolling open. They still open up toward the ceiling. Draw that left thigh back and into the hip joint more. And find your stretch deepening here. Even if you need to be here. Even if you need to be here. It's all beautiful. Just stay where you are and enjoy it. Breathe with it. Maybe coming to bring your head into your left fingertips if that feels good. Supporting your head, lengthening out through your sides. And then bring yourself back up to center. Revolve from the chest, so your navel still points forward. Revolve from your chest over your left leg. Left ribs back, right ribs forward. Reach along up through your spine over the line of your left leg there. Keeping that right hip back, you're stretching through those deeper back muscles, the key well. That kind of runs up through the back of the lumbar, mirrors the psoas in the front, connecting through the back of the pelvis and wrapping into the sides of your lumbar, your low back spine. And then just bow in there wherever you are. You can feel free to keep waving and moving with it. Inhaling and exhaling, rippling your spine long. Relax through your neck, relax through your jaw. Keep an active push down with your heel. And lift yourself back up. Finding your expressive heart opening, hip opening. Stretch here, cast your right hand back behind you. A big diagonal, so you're leaning onto that hand as you sweep the left arm low, it picks your hips up. As you unravel, hips open. You can even come onto the heel if that feels good, or stay long through the front of the ankle there. Arch and open your chest as much as feels comfortable for you. Open and breathing with it. And then sink it back down to the earth or to your cushion. Good, and then take a moment, take the cushion out if you're sitting on something, get it out of the way and come back into this kind of lounging on the beach pose here on your hands. Shake your legs out, toes together, toes apart, super releasing and neutralizing for those hip joints. And then bring yourself onto your back, taking your time to roll down there so you stay lifted up through that lumbar stays hugged in and you're just reaching like a cat through the upper back, out through your fingertips if you can for counterbalance or walking your hands down your thighs or down the mat with you as you go. Breathe. And then on your back, draw your knees in lightly, holding your kneecaps there, little circles, scribing those circles down and into the pelvis, massaging out the SI joint underneath you, sacroiliac joint, circling the other way. 
and using your hands to create that circling action so you can send the thigh bones deeper, releasing any hip flexor tension and SI tension in the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, as a result. <laughs> Good, and then shake your legs out, shake your ankles out, drain that energy from your body, and then do any other poses, of course, that you feel that you wanna do here. I'm ready to relax, but if you want to, you press pause and you linger a little bit longer in something, and then you come back and you join us in Shavasana. So wherever you are, it's perfect. Just do what your body's telling you to do. But if you can help it, don't skip this last part, Shavasana. Stay with us or tune back in for Shavasana because this is where the magic happens. This is where your whole body, the nervous system, your respiratory system really resets and rebalances and takes that new information that you just gave it and integrates that new information so you can really transform it. Releasing fully through your legs, releasing fully through your arms. Balance your spine, balance your head at the top of your spine. Relax your jaw. If you need to, hands are on your belly, or if you're able to, shoulder blades underneath you, palms open. Open to receive energy, open to let energy dissolve and go. Fully surrendered, fully relaxed. Breath is moving lightly now, easy, free. Press pause, stay longer in Shavasana. I'm going to come out of it. When you're ready to come out, you tune back in. And then just take some time to draw your knees up to your chest. Give them a little rock or a little circle to massage out your back body. Nice and light and easy. And come to balance at center, holding lightly across the tops of your shins. Take a deep breath. On your exhale, lift your head up towards your knees, lifting and engaging to draw some energy back into your body. And then just relax it down. Then help yourself over to one side, curl up on that side, pause. And then as lazily as possible, using your hands, spiral yourself back up to sitting back into your easy seat, which should feel easy, hopefully, because we did all that hip opening. You can sit up on a cushion, you can sit back on the couch if that's better for you. And then take your hands, one to your heart center and one to your belly. And then just return to your intention, whatever that was, whatever that intention was. For me, it was cultivating more patience, cultivating a deeper trust, myself and my capacity and in the world around me. So as you inhale, breathe in all the love, all the appreciation, all the gratitude that you deserve and you draw it into your body, let it swim all the way around you. Know that it's yours, it's your birthright. Give it back to yourself. And as you exhale, express that up and out. So inhale down. Exhale up through your loving heart. And then share that love with the rest of us. One more time, inhale down. And 
You're reaching your arms up, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Namaste. And take a moment to bow and pause. And then we'll seal the practice with one final om. Lift your head, take a deep breath in. Om.